The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 12th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. It is rally on at the moment for all the U.S. indices. They're trading the upside. Dow's up 223, S&P 48, NASDAQ 212, Russell's up three, semis up 72, Tranny's up 92. To the downside, you've got gold off 22 bucks, silver's down 36 cents, one and a half percent there. Lights Recruit is up 60 pen, uh, 66 pennies. Natural gas is up in nickel, 30 year treasury down 18 ticks, trending out at 12027. Our leaders in the clubhouse, the upside, you've got uh, Super Micro up 64 bucks and Vinny's up 46 micro strategy 41 uh, granite shares ETF up 24 bucks service now is up 22 to the downside alpha metallurgical resource off 17 bucks Boeing's down six and phase energy off five Broadcom five Southwest Airlines is down about five bucks as well so we got some movers and we've got some shakers let's begin by taking a look at the daily equity future the daily and weekly let's switch panels out here let's back let's do that right now give me a moment we'll switch over we'll get to our white panel chart we're going to look at the daily and the weekly because really to combine they're providing a, a very clear message at least at the moment as much as clarity that we can get so if we take a look at the es mini what do we know about it right now it is trading above that green oscillator and change i do, do not know if we will end the day above that we'll look at the intraday charts try to get some type of feel but that green oscillator and change line that's in reference to the price oscillator when you have a rising price oscillator above zero there's a bullish conditions period end of story uh, now the story the end of that story could be well maybe there's a topping pattern well that would be true out here but right now we don't have any topping pattern signal on a daily time frame for the es mini so watch that oscillator and change line at today's close that number is about 52 we'll call 5230 out there if you get it close about 5230 we're not just going we're at least going back to the highs from two days ago perhaps we're going to blow those out if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart this is going to be muy importante come friday why because we have a td9 count top that completed last week and if that high gets taken out doesn't matter if it gets traded above it matters where we close on friday and the number to watch there is going to be the 52 57 25 level if price closes above that it is game on and we'll try to figure out game on until about when if we take a look at the nq the nq is traded above one resistance level and that is the top of its profile and that's at 18 224 it should now go target that green oscillator and change line 18 498 that's a potential resistance point just as it is potential resistance 
resistance for the ES mini on its daily time frame. We won't know until we see the close, but because we're above resistance on the NQ, one level of resistance, price should go target the next level. When we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, what took place after last week's TD9 count completion was yesterday's move back to the top of the profile, although I'm not going to worry about whether that's the correct profile or not because I've got the continuous contract here. But what it did do is it tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. Not until price closes below that will the NQ get any kind of traction to the downside out there. We want to watch last week's high. And because if price closes above that green oscillator and change line, that's exactly where price is going to head to. That high from uh, last week is at 18,687. You get a close above that this week on Friday. Boy, that is a strong bullish market out there. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, the Dow right now is trading above resistance, the top of its profile. That suggests it should go target the next resistance level. Well, 39,557 would be it. That is that green asset and chain sign. If price closes above that OUL at the session end, we get back to the all-time highs inside the Dow Equity Future contract. The Dow right now, this is really important to understand. Because we don't see a top just yet inside the Dow Equity Future contract. We take a look at the weekly, and guess what we're doing? Well, last week's high inside of the Dow was 39.445. We're trading right now at 39.486. We are trading above last week's high. And that was a TD9 count top. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000 on the weekly chart out there, I've got a potential A to B equals CD to the upside. The only one of these four equity future contracts that have a top in it is the Russell 2000. It's a TD9 count top out there. We have traded below yesterday's low. We haven't even come close to taking out yesterday's high out there. And the Russell 2000 still remains bearish for its daily time frame. However, if at day's end, price close above 2102, Call it 21.04. Let's call it 21.04, but it'd really be about 21.03 out there. If price closes above that, well, that's going to suggest that price wants to go retarget and test that TD9 count top out there. The most important charts here to really watch are the NQ and the Dow for its weekly time frame. Why? Because they're the ones that have had the top and price has pulled back to test support. The ES Mini hasn't even got down to test that level of support, which was that uh, 51.32 level. But right now, what we're watching for is will price take out last week's highs? and close them up. It's only Tuesday, so we won't know that until Friday at the close out there, but it is definitely something to be observant of. Now let's go from here, and let's go kind of whittle down to the uh, intraday charts out there. So to do that, give me a moment here. We're going to change uh, just tabs. Just have to find it. Where is it? Good Lord. You're right in front of me. The Sam Heck. Here we go. It was right in front of me. That was like somebody asked me to go get the ketchup out of the refrigerator, right? And you open up the refrigerator, and you look, and you say, hey, honey, there's no ketchup in here. Yeah, it is. It's right in front of you. And you look at it, and you're like, no, it's not. And, of course, then, you know, your spouse is kind enough to get up, walk to the refrigerator, and pull it right from in front of your eyes. that ever happened to you? Uh, maybe that's just a Stevie thing out there, and it just happened again. All right, so now let's get to the NQ out here. So we take a look at the NQ. We don't need to talk about the daily. We've already uh, we've already discussed that. But if we look at the five-hour time frame chart, price trading above two levels of resistance right now. A bearish structured profile. That's what 18359 and its green oscillator and change sign. You know what its signal is? That price wants to make a move inside the NQ all the way back to its TD9 count breakdown level, 18623. That's its message. We got a different message inside the 240-minute chart. No, we do not. Price is trading above those two levels of resistance. The green, its oscillator and change line and the top of its profile at 18,359. How about the 120-minute time frame chart? 120-minute time frame chart suggests that it wants to rally higher out there as well. There's no topping signal uh, or anything along those lines. When I look at all the intraday charts out here, I don't see a topping pattern whatsoever. That doesn't mean it can't top, but I can tell you it's not because of a pattern that you or I follow out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So before we get to the uh, requests that have come in uh, thus far, I want to just focus in on the S&P here uh, just for a moment. If we take a look at the S&P 500 cash index, it does have a top. So the ES Mini does not, the NQ does not, but the NDX 100 does. So we'll take a look at the S&P 500. That top, now there's really two tops. The first top that formed inside the ES Mini was on the trading session of March the 5th out there. That ended up getting negated on the trading day of uh, March 7th. But remember March 5th out there. And then we had another top that came in. That was on the trading day of March 8th. That's where we have that all-time high. We've got that bearish engulfing candle. Now, if price in the S&P 500 cash index closes above 5164 out there, that favors, that increases the odds that, that that high, that recent high out here from a few days ago on March the 8th will get tested. Don't know whether it will get rejected or will get passed, but it will get. Uh, so, so the reason to take a look at that out here is because if we take a look at the seasonal pattern for the S&P 500. Now, this chart that you're looking at, if you look at the upper right hand corner, you can see it's a 96 year chart out here. So 96 years worth of data. What you also see is the years that have been selected in those uh, boxes that have got those check marks. Those boxes match that we are in a presidential election year. And so we're just looking at over the course of last 96 years, which would basically be 25 touch points out there for election years. Although what I would do is I'm going to get rid of 2024 out here. Let's just do that. Perfect. Didn't really change things that much out there. So now we've got 24 really active touch points out here. And this is how the S&P 500 is trading during the, those presidential years. Now, what this tells us is that we should have gotten a top around March 5th. What was the date that we got that first confirmed top inside the S&P 500? It was March 5th out there. And that top got negated. Now, if we take a look at where we're at right now, we should be forming some type of bottom. 
some type of bottom with price rallying at least into the early part of April. But we don't see any real decline of any substance until we get into that so-called sell in May time frame right around the early part of May, which really doesn't last too long. It lasts for basically the entire month out there before price then resumes the upside. Now, that is the presidential election cycle. What if we want something more than that? Well, to do that, I, I, I got to just fake it out. Let's go back to the same 95-year period of time which is where we're at right now. And what is this suggesting to you when we take a look at the S&P 500 and its seasonal cycle pattern? That's right. It's suggesting that the S&P 500 could easily rally into the early part of May. Now, which of these two, if either, uh, is an analog that the S&P 500 is following? I don't know. You know, I'd have to really go back and really take a look at it. But we do know that this is the underlying current. That's all that we really need to know. So we take a look at the S&P 500 over its 96-year here. So you might say 96 years, Steve-O. For goodness sakes, that's too long. All right. What does it look like over 25 years? 25 years even gives more evidence that we should be expecting that those highs get taken out and that we continue to move higher into that uh, May, June, July type time frame out there. So that's the normal seasonal cycle. But of course, that was just over a 25 year period out there. And here we take a look at the S&P 500 here. What we you know, we've already covered that. Um, Actually, we've already covered that, so I don't need to go on. So let's let's do this. Well, let's take a quick peek here at the other U.S. indices. So the Dow, Dow looks like uh, cash index, and this wants to target that 39.110 level. If price closes above that, that says price goes and tries to take out its Rosemont indicator top. In the case of the NDX 100, it's at 18.238. In the case of the Russell 2000, it's 20.78. In the case of the semis, they're kind of testing that area right now. That area, the level to watch to the upside, is 49.80. The Dow Jones Transport right now are trading about that green house that change on that suggests a further rally the nasdaq composite its number is 16257 and the new york stock exchange is already trading above its house and change line it is in a bullish mode out there so that's what we see when we take a look at the cash indices so we've covered for you the equity future contracts the cash indices now let's start rolling over and take a look at i'm going to close this out just to free up some resources let's start taking a look at at the requests that came in some of these are from yesterday but I simply wanted to get to them. I had mentioned that. So the first, we got gold. We'll take a look at gold. Hopefully, we'll take a look at gold later. But let's get to the first request out here, and that came in from Duncan Steve, and Duncan wanted to take a look at Coca-Cola. KO is the ticker symbol. And his question was, which we answered yesterday for him inside the den, what direction? And that direction was to the upside. Why? Because this had formed a TD nine count bottom. Price was going to go target resistance at sixty twenty nine. It did that yesterday. It's now trading above that level, and so it wants to go target. A TD nine count breakdown level. And that's at 6078. Steve O, if uh, price can uh, close above 6078, this would suggest at least a move up to the 6135 level. I'd say 6135 to 6148 because that is where price has found resistance on its weekly time frame. So I would say the direction for Coca Cola is to the upside and evaluate it as it gets to the 6078, 6148 area out there. So I hope that helps you and everybody else out. Uh, G-Man had wanted to take a look at Roblox out here. G-Man was looking for a long position out here. We take a look at Roblox. What I don't see is any kind of a bottom pattern, per se. I do see price getting back to a prior swing point. So let's go measure that. The prior swing point we're talking about is January 17th. Volume there, 6.5 million shares. It was tested with 5.7 million shares. It was tested and rejected. So that was your rejection of a lower swing point near a breakout level of support out here. And now the question is, can price deal with, uh, is, this, is, this, is this just a counter trend move, G-Man? That's the question you and I need to answer. And the way that we answer that is let the charts answer it for us. So there's a new, uh, no, there's not a new profile. If this is only a counter trend move, Price finds resistance between 41.99 and 43.69. That is its bullish structured daily profile that price closed below. That's where a counter trend move would run out of resistance. On a weekly time frame, price is consolidated with inside its profile. Because price remains below that green oscillator and change line, 41.44, you have to be on the lookout. It suggests that you could see a further retracement out there. And on a monthly chart, you've got a consolidation with inside profiles, 36.04 at support, and 47.20 as your resistance level out there now for Roblox this is going to be no this is not going to be 
So we'll skip that idea. Let's just move on to the next one. And that was to take a look at Carvana. CVNA is the uh, ticker symbol. So we take a look at CVNA. The question was, uh, options were suggesting a strong downside move out there. So we take a look at this. What do we have out here? What we have is we do not have any kind of top that Stevie sees. Instead, what we have is price right now testing support. And that support happens to be the top of its profile. Now, Regardless of whether we have a top or not, what we do have is a bullish structured profile that price had closed above for more than two consecutive sessions. Quite frankly, one, two, three, four, five, even today is above that. That says if a pullback in Carvana is only a counter trend move to the downside, price finds support between 75.52 and 77. 77.33 out there. That would be the area where prices find support, as it has this morning so far. If price closes below 75.52, we likely make a move down to 66.45 to 68.26. On a weekly time frame, it's possible that Carvana will confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top today. If it, in fact, does that, then what we would see is move back to the 65.11 area. So that's what I see. We take a look at the stocks for Carvana. Next chart that we're going to take a look at is Albi Morrow. ALB is the ticker symbol, but we're going to a break here in about three seconds. So why don't you pull up the charts for ticker symbol ALB? You tell me what it's going to do, and then we'll see if we can come to an agreement. Look at my charts. Watch my charts on the screen out here, especially if your tiger's done. That's easy to do. And what's price done so far this morning? What's it run into? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So the question about Albi Borrow, ALB as a ticker symbol, is has it bottomed? So we take a look at it. Um, has it bottomed? Let's take a look at the different patterns that are out here. This did form a wave number seven bottom out here. And that took place on March the 5th. So if the question was, has it bottomed? There's absolutely a bottom pattern and prices rallied since then. What it has rallied into is the first level or second level of resistance. That second level is the bottom of its daily profile, 126.83. Price is pulled back and is testing that red oscillator and change line. So that potentially is a level of support that have closed below and it's 122.37, which suggests that price would move back further. Further. Now, what price could actually do is if it closes inside that swing point that generated that wave number seven bottom, and that would be a close below 122.44. If price closes below 122.44, even if it's on lighter volume, which it likely will be because that had 19 million shares there. And today so far, this has only done 962,000 shares in two hours of trading. But right now, price is dealing with resistance out there. So you've got a bottom. You have to expect when something gets to resistance that it may not be able to get through it. You know, it's like working out. Can you do one more curl? Can you row one more stroke in that boat out there? So watch that 126.83. If we look at the weekly time frame chart and ask, has this bottom? It has a TD9 count bottom that still has been tested several times and is still in effect out here. It also has a Rosemont Dominicator bottom that is still in effect. So what's it dealing with? Well, it's dealing with resistance as well, and that's right now up at the level of 130.80. So that's what I see when I take a look at ALB. Has it bottom? The answer to that question is yes. And right now, price is just dealing with resistance. Hector and Patty wrote in. They were asking about Newmont Mining. Was it headed to the moon? Now, I wrote back to them and said, no, I don't think so. And the reason was, actually, it's this reason here. I'm going to switch. I'll, I'll come back to that chart. But it's this reason here, and that's because of the TD9 count top that formed on the daily time frame inside of Goldilocks out here. So let's go ahead and open up this chart. And gold, uh, since, well, I, I, this is the April contract, so I can't. If you caught the uh, segment that I did with Tom uh, or Tommy yesterday uh, during the, at about 3.15, if you haven't caught that segment, go grab that segment because that will then really share with you additional information about the TD9 counts and the way that they've worked inside of Goldilocks. And we had a TD9 count pattern that completed yesterday. Now, as you, as you know, once you complete a top, that just simply entitles price to try to get back and test support. It wants to maybe try to bust through support out there. We don't know whether it will or it won't, but right now what we do know is where is support. And support right now is at the 2135 level. I fully expect that we'll see gold get down and at least test that. If price closes below that, then it'll go test its next level of support, and that would be the bottom of a new daily profile. And that would be a 2109 out there. So you got a TD9 count top. It was well broadcast uh, to everybody, and therefore we know about the directional correlation between gold and the mine equities out there and it is a directional correlation and so even though the charge for Newmont mining you'll see when we go back to them look just simply spectacular it's responding in kind to the way that gold is responding and it's pulling back out there now with regard to the GDX out there even though that wasn't the question like gold it has formed a new daily profile out here it does not have a TD9 count top but it is going to uh, have a lot of sympathy for the direction of gold and or silver out there we take look at the GDX. Its new profile has support at 28.32 and it has resistance up at the 29.84 level out there. So that's what's going on. Now let's go back and take a look at, let me just close out those charts. We don't need those. Free up some resources. Now let's go back and take a look at Newmont Mining and get a feel where this is headed to so that Hector and Patty can track it. That's not the right symbol. That was ALB. We were done with ALB. Stevie, come on. Pick up Newmont Mining. There we go. So what do we know about Newmont Mining? Well, here's the cool thing, Hector and Patty. You need everything that you need to know is on the chart right here. You got a new profile that is formed. 
So where is support? Well, it's a bullish, slightly bullish structured profile. So the buy zone on Newmont Mine is between 3320 and 3365. That would be the first buy zone. Of course, we would say that would be the first buy zone if we see that gold is also bottoming. If price closed below 3320, then 3244 ish is where price would likely head to. We look at a weekly chart. For Newmont Mining, price ran right into the buzzsaw resistance of that bearish structured sell zone. And that sell zone is right at about 3406 where it's trading. Let me get the exact number, 3409. 3409 up to 3487. That is the sell zone support on a monthly, on a weekly time frame is 3322 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at Newmont Mining. Is it going to the moon at some point in time? It just is that uh, that uh, seat is uh, is filled right now with uh, price pulling back. And so it wants not to go to upper orbit, but maybe wants to go to a lower orbit. So that's what's going on inside of Newmont Mining. Hector and Patty, thank you for waiting an extra day. LB Lee is waiting an extra day as well. He's looking for a long position inside of Tesla. So let's get those charts up on our screen. We take a look at Tesla. Tesla Tesla confirmed a Rosemont indicator bottom pattern back on March 7th. It's trying to, it's tested that level today. So that swing point had volume of 102 million shares. So far in the first two hours of trading, 48 million shares. Yikes, it's testing that swing point with volume. Typically when you test a swing point with volume, you go back and you test it. The question is, does price stay with inside that swing point today or close above it? The swing point is from 173.70 180.04. If price closes above 180.04, likely it goes back and at least tests the high, 180.04. If it stays with inside the swing point, right now it's trading inside there, odds favor it gets back and it tests that low. What is that low out there? Well, the actual swing, yeah, that low comes in at 173.70 out there. So has it bottomed? You were looking for a long. It has. It's in wave number seven as well. Let's wait to see if I wouldn't take any action today. That's for sure. You got to see where this closes and then how that next test takes place tomorrow out there. The weekly time frame for Tesla has got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, that uh, suggests lower price down towards the 164.35 level. So you really need to see the pattern that's in place right now, that Roachman Dominicator pattern, get negated out there. So you're looking for a long. Let's come back to this tomorrow, Lee tomorrow or on a Thursday. Uh, Dan writes in, he says, Dan says he was stopped out of the UNG, is now the time to get back in. So let's go ahead and pull those charts up on the screen out here, if you give me a moment, and see what we can do to answer that question. Uh, come on, here we go. So here are the uh, UNG charts. I really hear the natural gas charts that make up UNG, and that's April right now. So UNG is exclusively, exclus, exclusively, it only took three times to try to get that out of my mouth. Three times. Uh, natural gas is trading as exclusively, UNG is exclusively, yeah, about that. That was nice. That was that was smooth. Uh, exclusively um, uh, is the April contract out here. So what we can see on a daily time frame is it looks, uh, it's, it's testing a key area of support. And that key area of support is its red oscillator and change zone. Now, price is trading right now below the bottom of its daily profile, 170.70 out there. And if price closed below this red oscillator and change line, which is printed at 1.72, and we're at 1.728, this is 1.724, uh, that would suggest lower price. We come back from this break, I'll give you the ifs, ands, or buts about natural gas. And then we'll also take a look at its intraday time periods because we're near an area of support. What do the intraday time signals tell us? We'll go find out. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, though, folks. We're looking at the seasonal chart here for natural gas. If you look on the uh, bottom right, you'll see the only two real positive months out there are March and April. If you take a look at the actual chart, you can see we're in a favorable seasonal cycle. It's the reason that Dan is asking the question, hey, I got stopped out. It's now a good time to get back in. So that's where that question, I would believe, is coming from. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the real key number here to be watching is the bottom of that profile. I believe that is 1.711. It is one point. Um, 712. 1.712. If you see a daily close below 1.712, then the answer is no, you shouldn't be taken. I mean, you're right at the point. I don't know what your risk appetite is. We're going to go take a look at the intraday charts, see if we can find some bottoming signals out here. But if your risk appetite is pretty good, you're willing to take that small risk out there, you can enter now and watch that natural gas contract on a daily basis. If today's close, we're below 1.712. That's saying we had lower. I take the small loss and then uh, come back and take a look at it. But now let's go look at let me close this out. Let's go take a look at the intraday charts out here for natural gas and get a feel for what they're communicating to us. Those are not those charts. Give me a moment. We'll get to those. That's the four equity future contract, the four horsemen out there. But now we get to the uh, day trading screens out here. We're looking for is the bottom right. Bottom right is a 10 minute time frame chart. Do we have a bottom? The answer there is no, we do not. We have a negated TD nine count bottom. The 15-minute chart, we do. We've got a TD9 count bottom there. The importance there, just simply on a 50, even though it's 15 minutes, is to watch today's low at 1.705. If price closes below that, the answer would be no. Now is not the time to re-enter uh, UNG because we're headed lower out there. Um, I do not see any other bottoming pattern signals out here. In fact, everything else is suggesting that price might want to move lower because on those intraday charts, price is below support. So you've got one time frame to hang your hat on with regard to the April contract for natural gas, and that's that 15-minute time frame. It does have a bottom. It should rally up towards 1.755 out there. What it could have, should have, though. And it had a TD9 count top on that 15-minute time frame. So a TD9 count top, TD9 count bottom. 
perhaps, in fact, it will hold. So, Dan, I hope that that helped you out. Let's go to our next request, which is a take look at Z Scaler. That's for David in Panama City. So let's pull up the ZS charts out here. Where did Stevie put those? That's not it. SMCI. Maybe it's back here. No, that was Tesla. Sorry about that, folks. It's not marked on my screen. There we go. Now we're at Z Scaler. Now the question is, David's wondering, can this get back to 190? And my contention is, well, it could, but not likely. And the reason is because, well, today what you've got is you've got a new bullish structured profile. So before, when we took a look at this, we said, you know what, 195.70 uh, may in fact hold. 195.70 was its TD nine count breakout level. If we take a look at yesterday's low out here, Yesterday got down to 195.66. So even though there's not a bottoming pattern, it can be a bottoming pattern when you pull back and you test and reject support. And that's exact. That's another very cool element about the uh, TD nine count system. It provides you with an objective. I don't come up with this. It's an object, and it's amazing how it works out there. I mean, Tom DeMarc, what, hey, amazing how it works out there. I, I don't even know why he doesn't really even talk about it. He focuses on the sequential counts out there, which happen so less often out here. Uh, but in, in any event, out here, I don't, you know, you've got a brand new. So the daily time frame is saying, I, I tested 195.70 and rejected it. Uh, today, it's formed a new profile with support at 198.82. It's bullish in structure. 201.98 is the center of that profile, and 208.32 is the uh, top. Um, on the weekly time frame chart, prices trade below support. So if the daily pattern fails, if you see a close below 195.70, then that's going to say, well, geez, uh, you can get back to 152 out there. You've got a monthly TD9 count top with support being 193.96. So 193.96 support, 195.70 is a support area, and you've got that new daily profile. That's the information I've got for you. Now, with regard to Zscaler, let's just take a look at its consecutive days uh, movement out here. So far, just a one-day rally, potentially. That's pretty bearish if that's all that it gets out there. But you know where support is. And I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing. And that was David in Panama City. Uh, McGuppy writes in, you'd like to take a look at NVIDIA. So let's get over to the NVIDIA charts out there. And if I read the question correctly, I read it kind of quickly. Sorry about that. But the question was something like, was yesterday the low? And this is only a two-day pullback. What in the heck is McGuppy talking about? Well, let me show you because he's pretty intuitive about that. If we take a look at the NVIDIA charts, we look at its dance steps. And by dance steps, what we're looking at is consecutive moves higher and consecutive moves lower. We don't care about those one-hit wonders out there. Now, although some of those songs are just simply fantastic, but when it comes to trading and investing out there, we like uh, two. you got to at least do something twice out there, and you got to do it twice in a row. Well, if we take a look at what McGuppy was talking about, this is the daily time frame, and what do we see out of NVIDIA? A two-bar knee-jerk reaction low. In a bull market, you typically see pullbacks that last two to four consecutive sessions coming off of the low here in NVIDIA from just October of 2023, we can see we've had one three, but here's a three, here's a three, two threes, uh, one, two, three, two bar pullbacks and one four bar pullback. So the answer to that question, McGuppy, we're trading above yesterday's high. That's a bullish signal. Very well, maybe. But we still want to go ahead and take a look at the NVIDIA charts because there's additional information. But it may have just been a two-bar knee-jerk reaction low out there. Now, price is trading with inside its profile. We can see that price is right now trading above its green oscillator and change line. That number is at 888.28 out there. I believe 888 is a good luck signal in the Chinese folklore language out there. But what price should do out here is make its way to 935. 935 is the top of the profile. Now, if it does that, it still has that Rosemont indicator top. In order to negate that, price has got to close above the high from a few days ago. That high was at 974 even Stevens. So you got a top, you got price consolidating with inside it, you had the two bar knee jerk reaction low, and now you got this little consolidation between support and resistance. On a weekly time frame chart, weekly time frame chart last week generated to sell the D point and form that little bullish or bearish bearish shooting star candle but the monthly chart says ah hogwash what the Sam heck are you guys talking about the monthly chart says I want to move higher out there well if it's going to do that it's got to take out last week's high 
Uh, so that's what you'd be paying attention to, McGuppy. But is it just a two-bar pullback? So far, the answer to that question is yes. What happens as price gets up to that 935.90 level? You also wrote in and wanted to take a look at ticker symbol SMCI. So we take a look at it. Price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. At 1123, it's trading above profile levels. It does not have a topping pattern that I see, although I do see wave number seven. Uh, let me just pull this back and just make sure. I'll take a look at those blue digits out there. Yeah, it's got a wave number seven signal, but price should rally up to test that uh, swing. Now, that swing point did volume out here. This was on March the 8th of 11.7 million. So far today, you're moving up with 3.7. You're moving up with similar type volume. So it's looking like SMCI wants to go tag that high at 12.29. On a weekly time frame, a TD9 count pattern is likely to form this week. Complete next week. The monthly chart looks very bullish. Well, the next request was to take a look at tier symbol EME. That was for Z inside the Tiger Zen. His question is, has the rally completed? Well, on a daily time frame, you've got a TD9 count top. I see a TD sequential signal. I see that yesterday we had a close below the bar four bars earlier. So you've got two topping patterns out here, Mr. Z. You got the TD9 count and the TD sequential sell signal. What took place yesterday, though? may be the extent of the move to the downside because what did price do after forming those tops? Went back and tested support. And support was 313.39. You need to see two consecutive closes below that to suggest, you answer your question, has the rally completed? At least for the short term. We come back to this break, we'll finish looking at the weekly chart and the monthly chart for ticker symbol E-M-E. -M -E. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back. We've got a 30-minute uh, chart for EME up on our screen out here. The importance of this chart is this uh, completed a TD9 count topping pattern at 1130. Uh, we've got about six minutes to go, a little less than six minutes. If at uh, six, if, if at 12 noon, exactly, as that clock strikes noon, if price is closing above 322, even Stephen, we're at 322.43, it negates the TD9 count top and suggests a further rally out there. Now, there's a gap that's open, so I would say that would be the target, the likely target, and that would be down at about the 324.45 level out there. So that rally is likely to continue. It uh, depends on the close at 12 noon, so take a look into uh, that. Uh, you just have a consolidation right now with inside profiles. If we did see a close below 313.39, two consecutive closes below that, then that would tell us that the TD9 count topping pattern on the weekly time frame should get traction. That traction would take us back to the 278 level. The monthly time frame chart, it's just simply bullish. But uh, Z, I do see a wave number seven signal. But of course, you know that needs a lower high. That couldn't take complete. That could not take place until next month out there. So hope that helps you out. The next request is to take a look at AI for Jay. He'd like to go long. So let's go take a look at those charts. See what they're suggesting. We take a look at them. They do not suggest going long right now. Watch today's close. If price closes below the low of March the fifth. That's at 3089. We are at 3075 right now. It'll trigger an A to B equals CD to downside. Now, albeit on lighter volume, that's that swing point had volume of 11 million shares today. This has only done 2.8 million shares. So it's coming through that swing point with lighter volume. Doesn't matter. You close below it, then it says we could easily get down to the 27 bucks. Well, before we get down there. Um, it could just be a counter trend move to the downside. If that were the case, price would find support at 28.75. That's the center of its bear structured weekly profile that price closed up for two consecutive sessions out there. So that's all what I've got on AI. No, I do not suggest that you take a long position now. Wait to see how the day plays out. See if you get that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Lastly, to finish out the show, let's take a look at the 30 year treasury, which did make its way back to support today. The question is what's going on on those intraday charts out there. And I don't see a lot in the way of bottom patterns out there. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming, but please rejoin me again tomorrow at 11 o'clock for that 11 a.m. update. Have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. We'll look forward to speaking with you again. Take care.